Welcome to the complete beginner's guide to Formula One, which I've compressed down into different videos. This video is all about the cars themselves. So let's get started. In our first video, which I've linked below, I mentioned that every car is different, which is true, even down to the engine. Although of course, even the engines have to be a certain specification. A Formula One car is based around a 1.6 liter turbocharged V6 engine that produces in the region of a thousand brake horsepower. Currently, there are four manufacturers in Formula One. Ferrari, Renault, Honda, or technically Red Bull powertrains, and Mercedes. Ferrari, Mercedes, and Renault, or Alpine as we should call them, use their own engines. And Red Bull use Honda engines that have confusingly been rebranded. All of the other teams buy engines from these four manufacturers. In 2026 though, Audi will also join the mix. Currently around 850 brake horsepower of the thousand is from the combustion engine itself with the rest coming from Hybrid Power or ERS, the Energy Recovery System. In 2026 though, there is a big engine regulation change and the amount of power coming from the hybrid system is going to change, with around 530 being from combustion and up to 470 from hybrid power, almost splitting the breakdown in half. There are multiple parts to an F1 engine and a couple of the names you may have heard of, the MGUK and MGUH. The MGU in both of these stands for Motor Generator Unit, and the K stands for Kinetic, and the H for Heat. They are two parts of the engine that collect wasted energy and convert it back into power for the engine to use. The MGU-H harvests exhaust gases by utilizing spinning magnets, all very complicated, but it generates electrical energy and then sends this to the battery. The amount of energy harvested from this system is unlimited, but teams can only deploy a very small amount per lap. The MGUK, on the other hand, is connected directly to the crankshaft. And when the driver accelerates, this gives them extra power on top of what's already being generated by the combustion engine. When they brake, though, this system is used to generate energy from the braking. And this, once again, puts energy back into the battery. For 2026, the MGU-H, so the heat side of things, will be removed, and the extra hybrid power that the cars will have will come directly from the MGU-K, which is generated under braking. Depending on the circuit, the braking zones, and the power needed, the drivers may also have extra energy that they can use at various points in the race. This is when you're going to hear engineers and drivers talk about the overtake button, a small boost of energy to help them either defend or attack, and they could press a little button on their steering wheel to get that extra boost. In years gone by, teams would throw money at Formula One. The well-off teams would often run a brand new engine every race. This can't happen anymore though, as F1 has strict rules on how many parts are allowed for an entire season to ensure fairness amongst all of the competitors. This means that in 2023, each driver is allowed three ICEs, so that's the main engine, two energy stores, or batteries, three of the MGUH and MGUK, and then two control electronics. They're also allowed three turbochargers and eight exhaust for the season as well. Any time a driver goes over the allowance for any part, they receive a grid penalty from five places upwards, depending on if it's the first breach or how many parts they take. They are free to swap out parts already in the pool though, as often as they want. So an ICE, the combustion engine that's done a lot of races, could in theory become an engine that the team only put in for a practice session and then they switch it out to one of the fresher engines from the pool for qualifying in the race. That's a pretty standard practice across the grid. Fuel is also changing. Currently, Formula One engines run on E10, which is 10% ethanol and 90% fossil fuels. You may very well come across E10 if you drive a road car, as it's likely the fuel your car will use. In 2026, though, F1 is changing its fuel to be 100% sustainable, utilizing 0% fossil fuels. It's something that's been planned for a long time though, so engine suppliers have had plenty of time to get on top of it with their engines. The Formula 1 cars have no driver aids. There is an element of power steering, but there is no traction control, although traction control has controversially existed in the sport years ago. But the entire power of the engine is delivered from the driver's right foot directly to the rear wheels. No all-wheel drive here. Drivers do have a wealth of options on their steering wheel though to control certain aspects of the power delivery, but it's entirely up to them to control the traction. The aerodynamics of Formula 1 are also very well controlled. Front and rear wings are used to generate the lion's share of a car's downforce, but in 2022 the regulations changed to a ground effect concept. Essentially, tunnels under the car generate a low pressure of air compared to high pressure that flows over the top of the car. Air then accelerates out of the back of the car via the diffuser, 
This creates a suction effect, literally sucking the car to the ground. From 2022 and beyond, it's actually the parts of the car you can't see that generate the most downforce. Formula One teams have to design their own cars from scratch based on the regulations, but there are certain parts they can buy from other teams and parts they can get directly from the FIA. These are called transferable components and standard supply components. TRCs could be things like suspension, clutch, fuel systems and gearbox internals, while the FIA supplied parts could be more boring things like wheel covers, of course the tyres, driver radio and fuel flow meters. Aston Martin, for instance, buy Mercedes engines, gearbox and rear suspension, and Haas buy as many parts that are allowed in the rules from Ferrari to keep their own costs down. Weight is also a pretty hot topic within F1 right now. Every car has to be a certain weight. That current weight in Formula 1 is 798 kilograms. This is because a lot of the components in a Formula 1 car these days are very heavy and the FIA want to ensure that all of the cars weigh the same, or at least all of the cars have to start at the same point. At the beginning of the 2022 season, a lot of cars were over that minimum weight, which is fine. It's a minimum weight. You can go over it. The problem is the further you are away from that minimum weight, the more time you're losing on track. Heavier cars are slower cars. This meant that in 2023, lots of cars were saving weight on their liveries. That's right, they just weren't painting their cars, instead just leaving exposed carbon fiber because it saved two or three kilograms of weight. Madness, but you've got to save the weight where you can. Lastly, don't be thinking that the biggest teams can just be throwing money at the development of the car either because it doesn't quite work that way. There is a cost cap now, and I will go into that in more detail in another video, but also all of the teams have a limited amount of CFD runs, so that's computer generated work and wind tunnel runs, and that's the most important way of determining how efficient your design is. These are limited specifically to keep the playing field even. And what's more important is this is on a moving scale. So teams that finish lower down the championship one year will actually gain more time the next year in the wind tunnel and vice versa. If you're constantly winning, you are always gonna be gaining less time in the wind tunnel compared to your competitors. It's a system designed so that the teams not doing well have the ability to catch up. And that's it for the car side of things. In the next video, we're gonna be talking about safety, covering topics such as the safety car, virtual safety car, and all of the flags that you might see during a race. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.